this is from the Dixie Fire Greenville, about 30 days. I was there four days after. And what I wanted to say um, about Supervisor Goss was that um, one thing, and this is perfect right after the presentation we just had, is that sometimes we can forget, oh, hey, you guys out there, I'm going to be fascinating, just so you know, if you wanted to come inside and witness glory. It's coming up right now. Brian Coons. Brian, I'm talking about federal advocacy. I'm about to wow you. Okay. Um, is that sometimes we, sometimes it's easy, it's hard, sometimes for the public, it's really hard for them to remember that after a disaster, that the, your public servants, your, your, your state senators, your local, your, um, the people who work at the county, they, have, they are also undergoing the grief and the pain of the disaster. Many have lost their homes and they have to carry on all the duties that they previously uh, were taking care of before and there can be a huge lack of compassion. Look, er, this is so funny, everyone's trying to move out around the side of the building out of my line of sight. So just, th they should know that I know that. Okay, so anyway, this is, um, so Kevin did lose his um, a pharmacy. They're each gonna tell you their story, which I think is very important, but I just wanted to note that. Um, I think the way we're going to do this to save a little bit of time is, first I'll say this, I had never been, I, I, I have an MPA, which is like an MBA for um, public for government though, and my dream was to work in government. Um, it, it, when I was a teacher, clearly I have issues that I'm doing these, you know, that, that that's my dream, but it was and is. Um, but I'd never been to DC as a lobbyist or an advocate before, and at first I was a little bit, like I would sit a little bit back and I wasn't really sure and I didn't really know how to do it. And so the purpose of this particular panel today is to really in, um, inspire and incite uh, permission structure for how to um, advocate for what you know your community needs, but also the area of, the, our issue is megafire, so we represent all megafire communities. Uh, what I'd like to do, actually, is I'm going to start with, uh, oh, that's me. Hi. Um, what I do is a few times a year, um, I well, this year, I think I've been there six times, um, I go to D.C. and I pound the halls, and my style is what I like to call politely furious. So I'm kind, but I'm very clear. And especially, um, so I could take 13 people, or it could be just me, or it could be just me and Jen, or it just depends on what it is. But the people up here I asked in particular because I know that if I call them to go with me that we're pros and we know exactly, like we fall into a rhythm together, we know exactly how to do it. And we also represent a, in, you know, a big spectrum of political um, beliefs, we vote differently. Um, but what we all care about is making sure that we're doing right by our fire communities. And we never have ever had one um, political argument or a partisan um, moment. I have to say that I'm very proud of the work that we do at After the Fire. This is one of our main pillars is actual advocacy. For those of you who think that perhaps you are not allowed to, be a, to do any lobbying as a nonprofit, that is not true. You can do up to 20% of perceived or actual resource impact, and you should be doing it. It's very important. So I'd actually like to start with um, Jeff. And um, we're from, the, you know, it's the same fires. And what we did to make it easier is we put some of the stats up from the fires. His fire in particular is the Tubbs fire. So Jeff, do you mind doing um, an introduction? And then I have some questions um, for all of you. So we're gonna go sure. through the introductions and then do the questions. Faulty pg e equipment. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so my name is Jeff O'Krepke. In uh, 2017, the Tubbs Fire burned through Santa Rosa. It's part of what was ended up being called the North Bay Fires. It included the Atlas Fire in Napa, the um, Nuns Fire right around here, and a little tiny one that always gets forgotten called the Pocket Fire up uh, just north of us. And um, I live in a, a neighborhood called Coffee Park, um, and me and 1,351 of my neighbors lost our home. So. Um, I like to be civically engaged. Um, I was on a couple of nonprofit boards I, and I was kind of motivated. I felt like I needed to do something. 
Um, and uh, I put together a little presentation with insurance professionals, builders, and, and uh, local electeds and staff and thought I did my one good deed, but like most of us, when we raise our hand, um, even if we take it down, it's still up to other people. And so um, literally the next day, it was like, when's the next meeting, when's the next meeting? So we ended up forming a, a, a nonprofit called Coffee Strong um, to help rebuild some of the communal uh, aspects of our neighborhood and um, advocate for ourselves. And through that, I met a lot of the elected officials in the area. Uh, and. Um, I was encouraged by, uh, we vote in districts in Santa Rosa. Um, the representative that uh, represents my district encouraged me to, to run for his seat because he wasn't running again. And so I did, and I was elected to Santa Rosa City Council where I now sit. And uh, because of Jen and a few other efforts, I've traveled to Paradise and uh, Superior and Louisville, um, and Reading, Santa Cruz uh, and a lot of other places. It's Tubbs fire was the most devastating fire in California history for exactly 13 months. Um, but it was unlike anything else that anybody had seen since kind of, uh, I forget the name of the fire, it was down in Scripps Ranch, San Diego. Um, Cedar fires, thank you. Um, but it was much larger in the damage that it did. So um, yeah, uh, all of this stuff that you guys have right now and all this learning, God, I wish we had this seven years ago. It would have been uh, much easier, but uh, happy to be here and share uh, my perspective. Oh yeah, um, so I was a renter uh, when the, when uh, that came through. Um, I work in insurance, so I was lucky enough to have renter's insurance and uh, was able to, but um, only about 25% of people who rent have renter's insurance. And uh, that was one thing that um, I, I still advocate for very, very uh, voraciously and um, is something that a lot of people forget is renters. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm uh, Steve Crowder. Uh, I uh, am from the town of Paradise. I was elected to town council on uh, November 6, 2018. Our campfire happened uh, November 8, 2015, or 2018. Um, we lost our home and business in, in the fire. Uh, we are a, were a town of about 26,000. We went to a town of less than 3,000 in uh, less than half a day. We lost about 12,000 homes. 95% um, of our community was destroyed. Um, as I was sitting here listening to, to Hawaii, I don't, uh, I mean, the, the challenges that they're facing, it just brought it all back. Um, housing, there was none in, in Butte County. Uh, we had 50,000 people evacuating, not, not just from Paradise, but from other parts of uh, Butte County through Paradise. Um, we've, uh, almost six years later, we've got about a third of our housing stock back. Our population is pushing 11,000. A um, lot of challenges uh, still to go. Um, we've got our, our recovery plan. Uh, we're figuring it's a 25 year recovery we are making good progress. Um, it, it's, uh, uh, it's been my privilege to uh, have the confidence, the people that were left in me to, uh, to reelect me again and, uh, and, and have me serve. And um, we're just, uh, we're, we're willing to help anybody out uh, that, that is going through this now or in the future. Um, our, my, my heart, every time I see a fire, goes out to everybody that's going through what we did. All right. Hey, Kevin Goss, Plumas County Supervisor of District 2, which encompasses uh, its largest district in Plumas County, which encompasses uh, Greenville and Indian Valley. Um, we are the home of, or one of the counties in the home of the single largest uh, wildfire in California state history, which is the Dixie Fire, right around a million acres. Uh, we lost uh, we lost Greenville on uh, and three other uh, four of the communities, uh, Indian Falls, um, Canyon Dam, Warner Valley, North Arm, and, and so on in, in the August of uh, 
of uh, 21. I am currently in my 12th year um, as being supervisor. I can tell you right now that there's no playbook uh, when it comes to a wildfire. And um, I did not know Jen uh, or after the fire, um, prior to the fire, uh, she showed up on my, in my driveway uh, with everything was burning around me and uh, said, how can I help? Where can I help? Uh, you know, along, and I think uh, I'm not sure if Congressman LaMalfa had just left my driveway or was uh, there as well, but uh, he, he had hoses and, and gasoline to help me out to uh, keep uh, my uh, property uh, from burning. But uh, it's, uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, our um, Patrick Joseph, our um, uh, Dixie Fire Collaborative uh, Executive Director is here and been doing such a great job. Um, three years out, uh, I think that we are really moving forward. We're through the RSF process. We should uh, be um, uh, putting out our plan. Um, our planning director at the county, Tracy Ferguson, has just absolutely been critical in, in moving this forward. We didn't really have a, a grant position or any of those things prior to this, and I think what I can, you know, impede on to you, like Steve was saying earlier, is that, you know, be prepared. Get prepared, uh, be ready, because you know this is going to uh, impact you at some point. Uh, maybe not directly, but you, you will be there. So get, get those pieces in place at the county local government. But my, uh, my lobbying uh, career started in the middle of the fire and is still going. And um, so be looking forward to answering any questions. So Jeff will be happy to know that apparently he's my mentor because our stories are exactly the same. So I'm looking forward to what we're gonna do next, uh, just watching you. Um, so I'm Jen Cowish, um, I'm from the Marshall Fire in Colorado. Um, a lot like uh, Jeff shared, I was a resident. Um, they put the fire out in the road in front of my home. So I did not lose my home, uh, but the entire community beyond where I lived was uh, gone in a matter of hours. Um, so our fire was just um, one and a half, one day, one and a half days. Um, so I, I, out of a lot of rage and empathy and sadness, um, jumped in immediately on behalf of my neighbors directly across from me that turned into the neighborhood, that turned into the community. Um, and started an organization called Superior Rising, which was a resident group that was there to serve um, the residents in the recovery. Um, Jennifer and, and Jeff also was a part of the delegation of that pay it forward concept, um, showed up at our, at our town um, while we were in sheer panic with no idea uh, what this looked like and where to go next. And um, they really, I, the feeling when I hear the folks from Maui talk about what it's like to have someone in the room that just knows. Um, it was like a, a godsend to have them show up and, and just look at them with sheer panic and have them look okay and, and get this sense of, you know, we, we, there is a next step and we just have to keep moving forward. So it was, um, it was a real, one of the most beautiful introductions and relationships that I have gained from this experience. Um, after some time went by, I was able to join Jennifer and, and Jeff um, kind of showed me the ropes in DC. Um, when they initially asked me to go, I, I was kind of like, well, I don't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what the answers are. You know, what, what, what am I going to bring to this? Um, but it turns out, you know, those folks up on the hill, they only know if we come and tell them what's happening in our communities. And we're the only ones that have those stories. Um, and so it was made apparent to me pretty quickly how important it was to establish a relationship with, with folks at the federal level. So now when our, our federal legislators come back to town, they check in on us or they ask, you know, the staffers are emailing to ask us what we need, what we're dealing with. And those wouldn't have happened if we didn't go there and sit in front of them and, and connect with them. So. Um, I'd also like to note that it all sort of weaves together um, when the Marshall Fire happened at the very <laughs> December 30th of 2021, which was a very rude time for a mega fire to happen. Um, 
I, when we pull the demographics, I try to look for like for like as much as possible. So this is, so I was very mindful in bringing um, Jeff and Brad Sherwood and then Pamela Van Halsema when we went out there because it was a suburban, really suburban urban fire. And so, so some of the issues, like um, I, we, uh, we curate it according to what's happening right in front of us. So it's very intentional. Um, and it's the same thing too when we go to DC, what I work really hard on is I come from a small, I come from this valley right here. Um, at, you know, uh, Steve comes from a, a rural place that did not actually qualify as rural under USDA prior, but as his mayor told me, Riley, after, you know, um, very dry, dry, I should say, right after, she said, now we do, um, because they had dropped below the threshold. Um, Kevin's from a frontier community, and so I just wanted to note that that's all part of the design, is making sure we have uh, diversity in the size and type of fires, communities, local incomes, all of those things really matter. And, you know, ideally we are Republicans, Democrats, independents, decline to states, because none of it matters to us. Um, I did want to point out, with, I'm not trying to depress you here, but the thing we've been working on for three years this month, we took, to, we took this issue to Congressman Mike Thompson, who's wonderful, he's here, and he immediately paired up with Congressman uh, LaMalfa from Butte and Paradise, uh, one, one Democrat, one Republican, and started this process of undoing this horrible um, in unfair tax law that says that if you get a settlement from a disaster like a mega fire, all of them, including the one in Maui, you are responsible, that is federally, um, I'm sorry, you have to declare that as personal income tax. So imagine what that does. If you're a vulnerable person and you get, let's just call it $100,000, and then all of a sudden your income maybe goes from like 37000 the year before to 137 the year after, well, your tax burden is significant. It's going to take that away. It's also going to take away veterans' benefits. Jen is a veteran, by the way. Um, it's going to change if your kids have scholarships. If it, it just it changes everything. If you're oh, if you are on um, the Affordable Care Act, it removes that, and you have to pay that back. Get and you cannot deduct your attorney's fees. Oh, use use your microphone because we're recording it. Yeah, you could also get jacked up to the next tax bracket. Very likely. So I would like you for those of you who are not aware of this. Um, and we've been talking to Senator Hirono and Senator Schatz's office from the very beginning, uh, uh, and, and Congresswoman Takuda. Uh, we, we've made sure that um, the Hawaii delegation was wrapped in immediately. And um, so this is something that we've been working on. We've been back so many times, and um, I'm going back on Monday again, and, um, and Kevin's coming with me, and Steve, you're coming with me. You're not. I I'm, forgot. Uh, I'm so sad about that. I keep denying it in my head. Uh, and then Brad Sherwood, another one. So there'll be three of us. Um, and so that's basically, it's called the Federal, uh, Bipartisan Federal Disaster Tax Relief Act, 5863. Um, I want you to know about it. I want you to watch for it. We were, we, we've done so much work that we were actually wrapped into the larger tax bill that doesn't appear it's going to pass. Um, but we've done a lot of bipartisan work. So here's some of the things that I would like to note most of all. Um, advocate for and with stakeholders, including emergent leaders. You do not need a title. I would like to say that this is Speaker Pelosi's um, office. When she was the speaker, none of us are drinking our water, so I think that's hilarious. You should look, we're all very nervous. Um, Michael Mandavi was on my board, that's how we got in there, but over there on the left-hand side is Charles Brooks, who's a resident and fire survivor from um, Paradise, and he was a reusable, reusable grocery bag salesman the day before the fire, but then he created Rebuild Paradise Foundation after the fire, and one of my great joys in life is putting somebody who would have never had that access next to the Speaker of the House. An hour later, it was Kevin McCarthy. It was a little different, but still very meaningful. Um, so when it, so oh, let me go to the next one, actually, because there's more. Oh, here, there they are. Okay, this is a larger delegation that we did, and I have some questions. I'm just going to take you through some photos, and then I'm going to put it out. This is a Congress, Congressman Nagoose, 
and meeting with Jen over here and um, two other people from her town. Uh, I have to say that Colorado is actually the most responsive for their senators and um, for actually sending people out on into the right away. First time we showed up, like we, they did not need convincing. Um, and this is where I really want to go to is ask for a seat at the table where decisions are being made. It doesn't matter how fancy the table, including Senator Pelosi's office. I don't think Stan is here today. And I'm very disappointed because this is a meeting I was in in 2018 that Supervisor Belia Ramos from Napa. Stan is way over there in the corner. But the reason why I included that is um, he actually remembered me from that meeting in 2018. And that's how I got on a national task force like five years later is because Stan remembered and so never um, underestimate the power of being at the seat. So I'm actually gonna leave that up for a minute and I'm hoping maybe we'll start with Jen and go down to quickly just talk about like, what is it like to have a seat at the table? What surprised you the most? And um, and just your thoughts around that because it's, it's most people don't feel entitled to that seat. Yeah, I think initially I was very um, overwhelmed at the idea of being able to be in those spaces. Again, as I, I said previously, kind of questioning what does this one person from this little town that had this issue going to you know, bring to the table for this. And um, I think the thing that was most surprising is how willing they were to listen and that there is already an existing process for there are people filling the Capitol building just like me, just like these folks that are bringing issues. And so um, that's that's the whole point is to come in. Those are our build. They're for us, and we have a right to be there. We should be there, and they can make the best policy with the best information when it comes from our communities, when it comes from us. And I think that was a big turn for me to understand that really one person from your community can make a huge difference in the effect that comes down the road to everyone else that's recovering in this process. Yeah, I think it's um, having a seat at the table. It, it was kind of surprising how uh, willing they were to talk to us. Um, I would subscribe that to the fact that they, you know, when you you talk to like a Lamalfer or somebody beforehand, they're like, "Yeah, I just got up a meeting with like soy subsidies, and the next thing I'm talking about is you know uh, this bill about tires or something like that." And we're coming in with an actual emotional, very specific thing, and and um, it's not. Uh, it, it's bipartisan. Both sides will listen to you. I mean, you could probably skip the person that thinks the fire was started by space lasers, but um, you can. Uh, but both sides are willing to listen to you, and and how you frame your argument, you know, um, is how it acts. Uh, is how is how the, is how you get them to listen. Um, I would say the thing that the two things that surprised me the most is the amount of walking. Um, if you if if for those of you that have not been to Capitol Hill. Um, that nice, cool building that was built long ago is rarely used. Um, it is five, five buildings, three for the house and two for Senate um, on either side that are like a half a mile away from it. And you're not going from like senator to senator to senator. You're going from senator to congressperson, back to senator, back to a committee, back to another committee. And you get Don't your steps heels. in. Don't wear Yeah, you get your steps in. Um, the other thing I would say that is surprising is, do you know who runs Capitol Hill? It's a bunch of 20-something staffers. <laughs> like, you go into these meetings and you're like, how old are you? Um, and I, I've, as a former staffer, it's, uh, I always respect them, because not only are, is it like, you could be talking to somebody from Massachusetts, but that person could get poached by Ways and Means and become a higher up on Ways and Means. That happens all the time. So um, it helps when you develop those relationships, but those are the people that can kill your argument going to the, to the person um, that they represent or can promote it. So um, it's it's one of those things where um, uh, that was really surprising to me is, is the age of, of the people that are running these these staffs. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more on all of that, <laughs> definitely. But uh, I think one of the things, definitely having a seat at the table, make sure that you sit at the table, make sure you sit down and then every single second that you're at that table matters. Everything that comes out of your mouth matters and talking in regards to engaging those folks, because a, a lot of the folks that we spoke with had no idea what a mega fire really was. And what, to, you know, what, what, what does that, what does a total loss of your town, you know, mean? I guess you can uh, look at Katrina or a hurricane or a tornado, but this is, this is different. 
This is this is uh, a recovery process that takes your years, not not you know not. Yeah, I, I know I, I know that uh, uh, hurricanes and tornadoes are 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 are, are issues and problems that, that that are that can be overcome. But the, this fire is 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 not to diminish any of those, but fire is just different. And so I think that bringing that uh, bringing those issues to the table, engaging those uh, staffers uh, that you know the twenty something year old staffers that really maybe have no idea um, to get that get that staffer to elevate that to the next level to the senator or the congresswoman or men you're talking to well I'll, <clears throat> I'll tell you i think one of, one of the reasons that we were so uh welcomed at uh at the table was due to jen here she really paved the way uh, at least since i've been going and uh i mean everybody knows who she is and i've been back a couple times since not with after the fire but for the town and uh uh, those relationships helped because it, it, it got me into places too, so that was really great. Uh, the one big thing that, that surprised me is, and I, I don't remember exactly, I think it was, was uh, Wyoming. We were, were in their office, and uh, the, the comment um, was, well, what difference does this bill make to us? This is just a California issue. Well, no, it isn't just a California issue. Um, it's, it's an every place issue. And, and the problem is they get so many pages a year of bills and stuff, nobody has a chance to read them all. They skim them unless there's a chance of it getting to the floor. Nobody looks at it. So us going there pointing out what's going on, I, I think, was a huge uh, help. Um, we're, we're still waiting to, to get this done, but um, I, I think the more we're there in front of them, the more we listen, and, and I'll tell you, for, from both sides of the aisle, uh, we've always been treated very well, compassionately, people listen, um, so I, I think uh, it, it's, we've just got to keep on uh, going and keep on trying. And to be clear, all of us have been multiple times, and so it's rare. Sometimes I go alone, but that's not my preference at all. Um, the I love that you brought up how young everybody is, and so one of the hard things that I had to learn over the years since 2018, the first time that I went, was... Um, I'm happy if I get the primary, but I don't really need the primary, but I do need the staffers and Jeff is absolutely correct. And like last year when they had a change in the speaker of the house, while well, I had a really good um, contact inside of the speaker of the house, um, he was like 32, so he wasn't 22. But um, so when, when it changed and we had to have a really important meeting about bringing this, um, this issue to the floor, we use that same staffer to make sure that we could get another meeting with the Speaker of the House. So these are the ways, it's all based upon relationships, which will surprise none of you whatsoever, but it's a really important thing. And, and one of the quick things I'd like you to talk about um, uh, before I go to the next thing, because we only have a, a two minutes, is, uh, I, is how shocking it is, I wanna just really reiterate this, we hear the same thing. It doesn't matter, Republican or Democrat. It's the same amount of compassion is shown to us, the same amount of interest, the same amount of willingness to learn, that we do not feel the toxicity that you read on the news and we are actually standing there. Even Ted Cruz has amazing staff. I'm sorry, but that was a little partisan. But he does, though. And they're worried about fires. And Jen, go ahead, tell them what you did. I went into Lauren Boebert's office. Yeah. That's how much I love my community. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Not even not, partisan piece. Like, it's not yeah. what you would think at all. No, it is. I mean, every this is an issue that is so human. There isn't, it doesn't, fire, disaster, doesn't care what your party is. It doesn't care. It doesn't, it doesn't care anything about what area you're in and what party affiliation that identifies with. And so it definitely across the board was received by um, offices. And, and one skill set that I, I took away from this was, you know, when we were in a Democrat's office, I talked more about folks on an affordable housing list and how this income would kick them off the list and the kind of effects that would come from, uh, from an equity space. And when I was in a Republican office, I really focused on the veterans. And despite 
there not being a lot of evidence that that actually matters. Um, so I'd focus on the veterans about you know these these keywords for them that are going to have them picking up these issues and taking them in a way that it's the same it's the same end result, but you know shifting that conversation to who you're speaking with and what's important to them in their offices. So that that was that was a, a amazing thing to learn. Um, I was able to actually testify um, for Senator Schatz's office this year in December of 2023 on the issues of block grant funding and how slow it is, so it can also lead to other things. Um, Jeff, go ahead, sorry, quickly. Yeah, I was just gonna say one thing to always keep in mind is how dynamic uh, the situation can be. When we were all on a trip together, we had um, uh, uh, appointments with senators that ended up being moved to just staff because um, we were there at the time, if you all remember that Chinese weather balloon that flew over the US, mm -hmm. they had gotten the intelligence report back on it that day. So we're standing, I think it was a Colorado senator's office, yeah. and there goes S Senator Cinema and Senator Klobuchar and Senator So, and we're like, whoa, that's, I've seen her on TV, and mm -hmm. you know, and all these things, and it's like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, we just got this back, and then I think Jen got a text, was like, yeah, we're not gonna meet with Padilla now, because he has to be in that meeting, but we're gonna meet with the staff, so um, just be, you know, there, I, I, yeah, it's it's neither here nor there, but it's it's always fluid. Don't get discouraged. Um, it is a human thing, and and as an elected, I, I'll say on my point uh, on my part, I don't want to speak for everyone up here, but like this is the kind of subject that you get into an elected office for. You don't get in to talk about subsidies or you know re uh, regulations on tires or whatever I was joking about earlier. It's to help people, and this is actually um, to Jen's point, like a human thing. And um, so people are very willing to listen. Uh, we, okay, I, I will say this. So um, you can also disagree or not like what they're saying to you. That's, I didn't like what Congressman uh, LaMalfa had just said, and which was that maybe it would take years and he had given a TV interview, so I was telling him how I felt about that. And I was like, maybe I'll just haunt the halls. Maybe I'll move right outside of your office. And he was like, maybe please don't do that. He's actually a really good congressman, um, very, very connected to his community. But even then, I just want to know you can have frank conversations. Um, this is our group um, meeting with Senator Hirono's uh, uh, senior staff. You really do have fantastic senators and uh, representations who are... Uh, representatives in um, the Senate. There's Jeff making a point. I forgot that I had Thank all you. of these. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the number one thing we wanted you to know is that we are here to advocate um, for you as Megafire communities and survivors, and we welcome um, more people to come with us to do that for what the issues become. And um, thank you for your trust in us, but most of all to not be intimidated by it, like it is your house and I can teach other delegations. I don't need to go, it's fine. I can teach you how to do it. It's really about just asking to be in the room and at the table and, um, and you know, none of us were doing this before and we sure do it, we do, we do a good job now. So thank you so much. And thank you so much all of you for being on this panel and all the work that you've done. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you.